I'm a librarian at Chakaway Middle School, and this is my presentation, 40 Tools in 50 Minutes. Just please have some patience with me because this is one of my first times using Google Meet to record and present something. Now, if you have any questions about anything, remember that my email address is here on the first screen and there'll be a link to the presentation with it as well. So, first of all, I wanna go ahead and apologize. I hope that everyone will be able to get something out of this. I know a lot of it's gonna be things you already know about, but what I'm hoping is you'll get at least a couple of things that you can use, or maybe you'll be reminded about something that you had forgotten and it'll be a great refresher. So. Here's hopes for success. Each slide's gonna have a symbol on it, letting you know what platform it's used for, or used on, excuse me. It can be Apple, Windows, or Android. So just look for those if you have a question about whether or not you can use it with your devices. So here we go. We're gonna start with a bunch of websites that I use and my teachers use. The first one's PDF Candy. So anytime you need to do something with a PDF, this is the website to use. It has lots of different things that you can use and you don't have to have an account to be able to use this website. I use this website a lot when we want to put documents on our Facebook page for school because you can't put a PDF on there, but you can put a JPEG. So I turn PDFs into JPEGs with this website. It's really great for merging PDFs if you have like separate files and you want to make them all one file, or say you have a 30 page PDF and you want to just have the first page or the first three pages, you can split PDFs with this website as well. I use the first two rows mostly and don't do much down here, but you can see it goes on and on. You can download this, but I did that once and started having trouble with it on my computer, so I uninstalled it, and I just use the website now. So since there's so much stuff here, I'm actually probably going to cheat and count PDF Candy as like four or five of the 40 tools that we're going over. But this is excellent if you do any kind of thing with PDFs and need to um, be able to work with them. The next website is Remove Background, and that's all it is remove background. If you have pictures and say you have a picture of a kid and you want them to be able to remove the background and put themselves in a historical setting or put themselves at a landmark, that's, that's what this is good for. I use this at home in my personal work and I use it at school for things like that. You don't have to have an account. It's drag and drop right there. Once you upload it, it will take the background out of the picture. You can edit and fine tune it if you need to. They even have some pre-made backgrounds if you want to put your image onto it. And it's very simple to use. And you just download the picture and you're done. No account and it's absolutely free. The next website is a um, collection of openly sourced lessons and other resources that um, anyone can get to. You don't have to be logged in to get to the main um, to the main page and the main stuff. And this is Go Open North Carolina. And you can search by keyword, subject, grade, or standard. But the thing I like the best about this is that there are groups set up in here that people, different people in um, education and around have set up so they can communicate with each other. And as a librarian and being the only one at my school, it's nice to be able to be a part of a group or a PLN that lets you talk about and what you do in your library. So that was one of the things that I liked about it. Now you would log in with your NC Ed Cloud information to be able to access, access the groups and the full range of resources, but you can get to this without having logged in. So that's um, Go Open North Carolina, and that's a great site to share with your teachers if they don't already know about it. This also is an NC Ed Cloud um, resource, NCBCE, and it's a workforce connection resource. 
and you have you have to be logged in to really see it to um to get the to get to the resources but it's not just careers and apprenticeships if you go through you can see that there are ways to search on the on the sides but um it's good to know that besides apprenticeships and other things that under say interactive activities, once you go through far enough and look, you'll find um, lesson plans that have been put up by the museum of sciences, the North Carolina symphony. And if you go far enough, you can see other things like um, the Museum of Art has lesson plans and things here. So it's it's usable by everyone, not just CTE or any class that falls under that um, umbrella. So remember, this is NCBCE Navigator available through NC Ed Cloud. This website um, was put in place or has has really grown and put in place because of the quarantine and i just want to make sure that everyone knows that it's out there because there are tons of resources here not just for teachers but for parents and students and just all different kinds of updates and things for people to look at it's like a rabbit hole you fall down it and you're in there looking at things but um you need to know about this and know that these things are available and being offered by DPI. So go here, go through things and just see what kind of stuff they've got. It's a great resource. The last, this next tool, another, it's another DPI tool, but, um, it's been a few years, but I, I've known about this, but I don't think people know that they can go and look up their license. You can go to this website and you don't even have to set up an account. You can go and verify a license, put your name in and it will um, let you look up your license and tell you what your endorsements are and when it expires and that kind of stuff. But, you also can set up an account and then you can pull up your license and print a PDF copy. This is good for things like Canva, which I'll talk about in a minute, where you have to have proof of being an educator. You can download a PDF and then you have a copy of your license for any kind of um, a program that, that needs proof that you're actually an educator. So remember that you can go to the licen licensure um website in the system and you can get that information there and that's it's it's a really good useful tool so the next three slides are going to have lots of stuff on their websites and it's things that you've heard of but you need to know that that they're there and that there's lots of stuff under them or in them so first we'll start with Microsoft's Education Center. Now, you know, it, you probably have heard that you become, can become a Microsoft ed, um, certified educator, but you don't necessarily have to take a test and do all that to be able to get something out of these websites. I like this website because if you're using Minecraft or have been thinking about using Minecraft, they have a whole section on Minecraft um, where you can go and learn about how to use it in your classroom. They also um, talk about Lego, they talk about STEM, but they do talk a lot about accessibility and inclusiveness and how the programs are have these tools now to help um, to help kids that need that need the extra help to be able to um, to work and do well with these kind of things. So that's what I like about um, Microsoft Center. But again, you can do their training program and get Microsoft certified. Now, if we do Microsoft, then we need to mention Google. A lot of people are getting um, Google certified one, Google certified two um, certificates these days. And they have a whole website dedicated to that. But again, you don't have to go take a test. You can just go look at their training and learn stuff if you're a Google school, if you're just using Google for you um, at home, there's still different trainings for different um, apps 
are in the in the Google suite. So Google for Education, not just for getting Google certified. You can use it to learn more, to be able to um, to work better with your teachers, with your students and in your job. So if we've mentioned Microsoft and we mentioned Google, then we've got to end up with these three with Apple teacher certification. You can become Apple teacher certified, but again, go here, find the teacher resources and just, if you use Apple products, go and see what they have, what they've added, all the different things that you can look at and learn more about to help you use your Apple products better. And if you only have one iPad in your classroom or your library or your school for that matter, it can't hurt to go and try and see what kind of things you can learn to um, use it better. Now, Easy Breezy Kahoot. You probably know about Kahoot. If you don't, this is what it is. It's a multiple choice game question format thing where students answer questions um, with their devices and you can do quizzes on any subject you want. There are thousands of quizzes that are already made up. Make your own. I use this um, for reviewing for Battle of the Books. The kids compete against each other. It's all about speed and accuracy and it's a great brain break. It's a great review. And the kids love competing against each other. They love it. So you can set you up an account, go in here and, um, and use this with your students. And it's great when students have their own devices because it just makes it um, that much easier and they don't have to share. Symbolu. Symbolu. I looked at Symbolu years ago and we never did anything with it. My district didn't do anything with it. But this past year in March, when we were throwing so many things um, at the teachers and so many things at the students, and we were just trying to do the best we could with resources and websites and this and that, I decided to go back to Symbolu because we wanted something that was visual, not just a list of resources, something that the kids could look right at and say, boom. There's Kahoot, boom, there's Brain Pop. Let me just click there and go right to it. So this is what our symbol looks like. And um, you can see I haven't used all the tiles. And I like that because it helps separate some things. And these I've put an aqua background on. That's my fifth grade group. And then um, things over here would be for the other grade levels and maybe the fifth grade. But... These are specific to fifth grade. And then at the top, I've put tried to put communication here and then working this way, more of the LMS stuff. So it's sort of broken up and it's free. I did set up an account to be able to do it. And you copy the link to be able to share on your web page. Or if you're comfortable with editing your source code on web pages, then you can um, get the source code from Symbolu and embed it into your web page. But I love it again because it's visual and it's quick and easy, especially for younger students to be able to find stuff. Professor Garfield. I've used Professor Garfield for years and I used it when it was housed or um, controlled by um, Virginia's Department of Public Instruction. And it was a pay subscribe um, program and they had lots of videos on um, pup safety and math and science and personal um, SEL kinds of things. So this is Professor Garfield and these are all clickable and different things that you can find out about, but there are little videos with games that teach lessons. And then there are sites embedded in this. Um, but you can click through all of these and find different, um, different things for you to do or for your kids to do or do it all together. But this is Professor Garfield, and this is great, especially, like I said, I used it with my fifth graders, so it would be great with elementary.
Now, just in case you haven't heard, the results for the 2020 Teacher Working Conditions Survey are out. And um, I like looking at these for my school stuff, but I also like looking at other schools in my district and possibly um, schools that are similar to mine, middle schools in districts that are close by or um, anywhere in the state that say my school's 5'8", so I, if I can find a school that's like that and then see how they did, it's just sort of interesting to me. But just in case you haven't gotten the link, the 2020 teaching teacher working condition survey results are out searchable by school searchable by district here it is there's your link share it with your colleagues look at your results remember school improvements all about looking at looking at these kind of things and building from there now google keep google keep is a is part of um g suite and it's an app you can have on your phone or your device and um, it's just a note taking list making app. And it's great because you can have all kinds of different lists, personal or school, and you can share lists with people. You can have check off lists. You can change the color of lists, all that kind of stuff. It's great for sharing. For instance, personally, I have one that's a grocery list on my phone and I have shared it with my husband so that we can add things to it as we think of them. And that way, um, we can keep track of what we need. And when we go to the grocery store, we've got a grocery list already made. You can um, do any kind of thing with this, but Google Keep is a great way for um, making lists. I did have a computer teacher that had her students in their Google Keep set up notes with their passwords on it. So it was a great place for them to go and find passwords for different programs. So that's also another way you could use it. Screencast-O-Matic. I use Screencast-O-Matic for making very short videos to show kids how to do things. I did a bunch of these back in March for how to change your password, how to change your mouse, because they do that on the Chromebooks a lot, how to um, get into different programs, how to get in your email. Screencast-O-Matic is free for 15 minutes or less. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I like it better than any of the other ones just because it's for me, it's really easy to use. Um, you click launch free recorder and it puts a little thing on your computer and then you can record the whole screen, or just part of your screen. But it's great because once you finish recording, it will let you upload straight to YouTube or you can download the file. So it's really easy to use. But like I said, the free version has a 15 minute time limit. Now, here's a great thing that I found from one of my teachers, and I found, found it through them and love it. And this is another place where I'm going to cheat and say this counts for like five or six different tools because there are so many useful things on Classroom Screen. Now, a couple of examples I've listed on this slide. There's a text box for bell ringer assignments. Um, there's timers, and you can have multiple timers. There is a work symbol to let your students know their voice levels and you can change your background. My teachers, some of them use this around Christmas for uh, the fireplace. So it would feel cozy and warm, but this is what classroom screen looks like. And again, this is a free version. It has Harry Hazel as the background and you can change your backgrounds, but you can see here, you have all of these tools to use. And like I said, you can have multiple timers going. There's a clock you can have up. All of these tools are available. And there is a, um, or there was a great poll. Well, I don't see it now, but there used to be. A uh, new poll where you can do an exit um, ticket kind of thing with it. So that's something to play with. And if you haven't used Classroom Screen, you definitely need to check it out because it is an excellent tool. And remember, not just one tool, maybe four or five tools to use with your classes. Now, Flipgrid is a video response tool that. Um, you set up a question 
and your kids reply to it. It's great for writing and recording and it um, gets kids comfortable with speaking. Not necessarily, not necessarily in front of, in front of a group, but to a camera. And um, I use it for several different assignments um, this past school year. The first one was for my fifth graders to make an introduction. They had to answer questions about themselves and then record it. So here is Jaya and her recording of her introduction. There we go. My name is Jaya Edwards, and my homeroom teacher is Ms. Rasmussen. And my birthday is on March 26, 2009, and I am 10 years old. And um, my favorite subject is PE. And um, the thing I love about CMS is we have Wonderful Wednesday. And um, a fact is about me, Ron Clark is my third cousin. So they can add emojis and things at the end of it. And they love seeing themselves. And what I do is I give them an assignment and let them spread out across the library because they all have their own device. And it's just a great way to get them to, um, to write and to record themselves and start feeling comfortable with speaking. One of my teachers at um, my school used it for fluency and had them record themselves reading the same piece at different periods to see how they got better as time went on. So that's another thing that you can use. And there are, there are tons of ways to use Flipgrid with students and teachers. 10 minute teacher podcast with Vicki Davis. I, I really enjoy her podcast. And so I really wanted to share it because it takes me about 10 minutes to drive to work. And in 10 minutes, I can listen to one of her podcasts and get something out of it and feel good about what I'm getting ready to go and do. It's great because it's not 30 minutes. It's not something you have to write really dedicate a lot of time to. Um, and, and you get so much out of it. She does a podcast every day and it's not just for teachers. It's guidance counselors, librarians. It's a certain program or certain platform or just different things that you can um that you can listen to sometimes it's seven minutes sometimes it's up to 10 minutes but it's not not usually longer than that so like i said it's great you get a pop of pd some inspiration something to um something to look at later so here is her website and you can go down and see the different ones that she has here. What's well, hot about YouTube and education, um, creative projects with Google tool, tools, mathematical modeling, see um, all kinds of different things for, um, for everybody, not just librarians, not just teachers, school counselors, PD, admin, that kind of stuff. So. It's great. Go through, pick out a couple um, and just give her a listen, because like I said, she's generally entertaining and she's always got something useful. Now, I, I like I threw this in just because I love Oregon Trail. If you remember when Oregon Trail first came out and you were playing it on an Apple II E, Apple II GE, whatever. it's been so long um, with just the little people. They've still got it out there. I love it because it teaches um, kids to plan ahead and it teaches kids what dysentery is about. And sometimes it's just a brain break for me. But Oregon Trail is still available. And there it is. You play it. It looks just like it did. You put your family's name in and then you hate to see it when they break a leg or die of dysentery. But there you go. Oregon Trail from when from a long time ago <laughs> so that's oregon trail now the next tool is wakelet and i love wakelet because it is like pinterest for the web and um it's a great tool for saving websites urls 
YouTube videos. You can save PDFs to it. Some people are using it to collect things and make um, newsletters, which is more advanced than I am right now. But um, it's great because you can make your wakelets public and then you can push them out to your Google Classrooms. And what's really good about it is if you're watching a video in Wakelet or through a link in Wakelet, then um, you don't get the next ups or the ads. It's just in a little window. So you make collections. And for instance, um, this is a collection that I started that's just links to articles about um, synchronous and asynchronous and um, all this online learning that we're doing and preparing for. And so you see here's a YouTube video from Powtoon and when you play it hey guys so today we're going to be talking about something really important it plays it right there and like I said nothing around it it's great to just be able to see that and again like I said if you make your list public you can share them out and um, you can share it to Google Classroom which is a great thing because I know a lot of schools are using it, but you can also share it through, um, through all these different platforms, teams and where else. And like it says there export or embed. So that's good use of Wakelet as well. And um, that is also an extension. And I'll talk about um, adding it as an extension later, but that's Wakelet and that's a great tool. I fake text message is exactly what it is. It is a way to create fake text messages. You can give kids assignments that they are historical figures, famous people, and in their um, texts back and forth between two people, they ha you know they have to say things and talk about things that will um, give us more information about them. And the kids like this because it looks like a text message and they love making these things. But that's what I fake, I fake text message looks like. Word art is something that's been out for a long time, but um, I forget about it sometimes and then I go back to it. I've actually made a word heart here on the slide with all the names for all the people at my school and I made it into a smiley face. But when you go there, you can um, put your words in, pick your um, fonts, pick your colors, pick your um, your shapes. Let's see if it'll let me go. There we go, and um, and create it, and you can download it. I think there's a way to email it, but you see, you can change all these things, and you can put your words in, and then you can change the um, order and size and that kind of stuff to make it how you want it to be. But um, that's free. Again, you don't have to have an account. And that is word art. <clears throat> so I mentioned Canva earlier when I was talking about licensing. If you're not using Canva to make posters and signs, you really should because that you can make the most professional, fantastic looking signs that make you look like a pro and it's just so easy and simple to use. These are examples of um, signs that I've made for book fairs for different things. I use this a lot to make things for Facebook and for our webpage. Um, just because like I said, it's already there. Now Canva, if you sign up for it just as a regular account, you have to remember that there are some paid items and then there are free items and there are tons of free items. So you don't have to worry about the paid, but if you apply for an educator's account, then you can get access to more of the paid items, not necessarily all of them, but um, you can also set up, once you're an educator, you can set up classes and you can um, go in and do things with students and give them assignments and things. Before I had my educators account, I actually got my kids to go ahead and set up their own, um, my library helpers set up their own Canva accounts. And I would give them assignments like March, make us some posters with these themes. And then they would go in and go through everything. And um, I would have them share them with me so that we didn't have to print them and everything, but you can make all kinds of different things. The good thing about um, 
the integration with Facebook is, is that you can design a Facebook post and put it on Facebook straight from here. You don't have to save and upload and do all that. It can, it's all the way integrated so that you can do it through here. But see, if you go and want to do a poster, you get a blank poster. They have templates, photos, elements, all the kinds of things you can want. You can even upload your own pictures. Say you want to put um, your mascot on a poster then you can do that too. And I, I just love Canva because it's very easy to use and um, it just makes everything look polished. And that's, that's something I really like about it. Now, just a few apps. Overdrive. Overdrive allows you to use, um, if you have a, uh, an account or public library card, then you can have access to all of their online materials, their ebooks, their record audiobooks, their um, magazines, anything that they have electronic. Overdrive is one is one of the apps that you can use to um, access these things. There are other ones. There's Libby and some other ones um, that can do this too, but I use Overdrive to access um, the library, the public library here in Washington and the, um, the regional library, the BHM here in Washington. So I wanted to um, make sure that you knew about this. If you have a public library card and you want to use free audiobooks and free ebooks, then um, get Overdrive and get with your librarian at your public library and they will help you get your account set up. Novel Effect. Novel Effect is a great app for reading stories to children. And I'm upset with myself because I forgot to bring my book with me. But um, what you do is you download the app and you have it on your phone and you're going to read a um, story to children. <laughs> I'm, I'm really thinking about trying to get a book, but I'm not going to do it. Anyway, you check their database for their books and they have a lot. They do. They don't have all, everything, of course, but they have a lot. And you choose a book. And when you first get the app, you'll set you set up your voice. So it sort of gets used to your rhythm. But what happens is when you choose your book, as you start to read it, it'll play sound effects to go along with what you're reading. For instance, I could read the poem Magic from um, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And when it talks about mermaid singing, you'll hear mermaid singing in the background. And when it talks about goblins gold, then um, you hear gold coins rattling. And when it talks about the leprechaun, you'll hear a leprechaun's voice. It's really great for elementary kids because all of a sudden they're hearing the noises and the sound effects are there. And, and it, just, it just gets them in the book even more. And it's just sort of fun. Okay, so that's Novel Effect, and it's an app that you can put on your um, Apple or Android devices. <clears throat> now, this is something that I use personally, so I wanted to share it with you. I, um, on my phone, I have an Android phone, and on it, I have um, location turned on. So Google knows where I am all the time. So one of the things that a friend told me about was this Google opinion rewards. And what happens is, is that based on where you may have been or just an odd question every now and then, you'll get a survey. And when you fill it out, you get paid Google money. Now, it could it could be as much as 10 cents. It could be as much as 48 cents. And um, I'm, you don't get rich doing this because, again, it's Google Play money. But sometimes I'll get a question and it'll ask, uh, what um, work, what type of work do you do? And it gives you a list and you check a box and then it gives you 10 cents, Google Play money. Sometimes it'll ask you, have you been to one of these locations recently? And then it'll ask you about your, um, your shopping experience. Again, if you don't want to be telling all of your information, it might not be for you, but if you don't mind giving them a little information on some things or just answering a simple question every now and then, it's a great way to earn money to be spent on music, um, apps, games, eBooks, 
videos, movies, anything that you could get through Google Play, you get Google Play money. So I just wanted to put that out there. That'd be more of a personal um, tool. Okay, the Game Gals Word Generator. I have this on my iPad. I use it with my fifth graders again um, for word generating because one of the best ways for me to learn their names at the beginning of the year, of course, this year will be much different, is to have to call on them for a game where they're trying to guess things. So on my smart board, we'll just have um, a blank page up. And this program generates Pictionary words. It also generates words for charades and for, and for a couple of other games. And you can do easy, medium, or hard. And it just pops a word up and then they can go and draw it. And it's great because I don't have to be thinking of different words. And then if we don't like the word that pops up, we'll pop another one up. And there's just tons of words in there. And it's great. It's free on Apple. But the last time I checked, you had to pay for it if you wanted to put it on an Android device. Chatterpix. Chatterpix, I have not used with my kids in several years, but it is great for, again, doing some writing and doing some speaking. But the fun thing is, is that you take a picture and it could be a picture of a face, an animal, an inanimate object, anything. And the Chatterpix app will give you a line and we'll let you draw a mouth on it. And then you record your voice to make the picture talk. So let's see. Oops. Nope. I'm sorry. I don't have an example there. But what I did one year was I had my kids um, do a little research on a president and I have the books um, you know, they had the president's face on the front. So they would take a picture of the cover of the book and put the line where the mouth was. And then they would write their paragraph answering their questions or give us some information as if they were the president. So the mouth would move and it would be their voice, but it was very cute and it was something different for them to do. So that is Chatterpix and it is free and it is a great little app. Now, a couple of Chrome extensions. Remember, these are tools that help make working inside of Chrome easier. You just search the Google extension and to install it and do that yourself. If you don't know how to add an extension, I have a link here that takes you to a video that I have a short video on how to do it. It's very easy, but these are a couple of extensions that I use. Back to Wakelet. You put the Wakelet extension in, so that way when you're going on Chrome and you're finding a website, there's a little blue W, you click it, and then you've put it into one of your Wakelet boards. Again, if you're used to Pinterest, it's, just, it's a lot like Pinterest, but this is for um, websites and things and not necessarily craft projects or recipes, although I guess you could use it for that. Lightshot. I had a librarian in my district tell me about this and i love this program now you can um download it as a program but um, i use it as an extension in chrome and what it does and i will show you is it looks it's a little purple feather and when you click it your screen gets a shade on it and you just click hold and drag what you want to cut and there it is. And you get all these tools to use. Usually what I do is copy or save something. And you can, but you can write on it and change it and do things to it before you copy or save it. But it's great if you just want part of a screen, especially if you're trying to show something to your administration, if you want to show part of something to some students, or if you have something you want to show your parents and you want to try to cut other students' names out of it. But this is great for screenshots inside of Chrome. So back to this, that was Lightshot, which is a Chrome extension. And then one more thing, the snipping tool. Now, this is for Windows computers, and it does the exact same thing that Lightshot does, but it's already installed on your Windows computer. It's one of the tools that comes with the system, 
and it does the exact same thing. I'm using a Chromebook to record this, so I can't show it to you right now. But like I said, it works just like Lightshot, where you click, hold, and drag, oh, drag what you want to um, clip, and then you can change it and write on it and do different things and save it or copy it from inside the program. But that's snipping tool, and again, that's um, Windows. So, 40 tools plus or minus. Remember that they can be apps or extensions or programs. So depending on the device that you're using it on, it's going to be how it works. And remember to check for the little symbols on each slide to be sure that it'll work on your device. I hope you find something here that you can use. I appreciate your sitting through until the end of this presentation. And remember, technology teaches you patience.